Let's talk about music. Alright, this video is going to be a little different. Over the past month I've been writing, filming, and editing this video. In the past, I've made some pretty shit videos, and some good ones, but this will no doubt be the one that I've put the most thought and effort into. This video is about music, and specifically how I came to understand my favorite albums a little bit differently. But first, let's just talk about music as a whole. Music as an art form is just so versatile. It's interesting how different the tastes of music can vary from person to person. Person. I've got my own taste, which I'll express in this video, but it's interesting to me how different my tastes could be to someone else's. In other types of media like games, movies, and TV, a lot of times it's really easily distinguishable. Usually you can tell when something is good or bad, but that sort of concept doesn't really exist for music. It's not as black and white. An album that I don't like could be someone's favorite album. Anyway, let's get into the video. Real quick before we start, this video is going to be mostly about these two genres, um, so if you don't like these genres or if you're not open to hearing me rant about them for like 20 minutes, you might want to click off the video now. And also, I gotta say, if your favorite album isn't in this video, uh, just know this video is based on my likes and my likes alone. I'm a bit picky with the music I like, and besides, this is a really personal video in general anyways. Alright. When I was in middle school, I was fucking annoying. There's not a lot that I can look back on from that time without cringing, but the reason I bring it up is because when I was a little 7th grader in 2015, I discovered my first perfect album. I was sitting on a picnic bench outside my school with a friend I don't really talk to anymore. He knew I liked electronic music, and while he wasn't really the biggest fan of it, he decided to pull up a song that would change the way I looked at music. This is Discovery by Daft Punk. They came out in 2001, two years before I was even born, and yet when I listened to Aerodynamic, I quickly realized it was better than any Aphyxia remix or Monster Cat song I had ever heard. When I got home, I spent hours listening to the entire album over and over. I was hooked. Every song on Discovery is different. There are some songs that utilize samples like High Life and Superheroes, some are emotional like Something About Us and Digital Love, and some are purely instrumental like Aerodynamic and Voyager. All the songs, the ones with lyrics, the ones with samples, and the ones with purely instruments tell a story. And I think the best way to experience this story is through... Yep, Daft Punk made a movie, and this movie uses Discovery as the soundtrack. It's a great movie even for the plot alone, let alone the music, but I think truly the best way to experience this album is to listen to it start to finish with your eyes closed in a dark room. That's when you truly appreciate not only the story that the music tells, but the story that you create in your head. The significance of my introduction to Discovery was really the way I approached albums. From that point onward, every time I listened to an album, I'd listen to it start to finish, trying to recreate what I had experienced with Discovery, but it was pretty much no use. I wouldn't find anything as meaningful to me as Discovery until 2018. In 2018, I discovered Feature Funk, and to be honest, I'm not sure what it is I love about it so much. It could be the samples, which make the song sound like it could be played in a Japanese mall in the 90s, or it could be the instrumentals, which match the singer's voice perfectly, whether it be a soft electric piano, some alternating kick and snare drums, or an electric guitar playing the same riff over and over. It's a genre that I will never get tired of listening to. Two years ago, I listened to Future Funk for the first time, and like with Discovery, I was pretty much hooked. I had heard some songs from the genre from artists like Vantage, Macross 8299, and Fleming, Flaming?
Flamingosis. All right, there we go. But it was this song that really grabbed my attention. This is probably my favorite song, period, because of a few things. It introduced me to this genre, it showed me the power of samples and music, and it's just a damn good song. Bay City Rollos has been in my most played song since I found it back in March of 2018, and it's by far the highlight of Young Bay's somewhat self-titled debut album, Bay. This album also has a story, and while it's not as blatant as the story in Discovery, you know, this album doesn't have a movie to spoon feed you the story, but it's there. There's a start, a middle, and an end, and maybe this is my appreciation for it introducing me to Future Funk, but I really think this album is something special, and that's that. This one's a little bit different. I don't want to say that it's weird or anything, but it's for sure different. In the future funk community, a lot of artists use mostly Japanese samples, which makes the songs that use other types of samples uniquely interesting, at least to me. I think of Uniwa, who sampled Brazilian pop, or Angry, who I'll talk about later, who sampled some American soul music. A lot of what makes Love Story so weird is the sampling. Desired samples and exercise instructional video in Sunshine Aerobics, a sitcom and excuses, it's honestly pretty rare to hear any Japanese spoken in this album, and when it is, it's usually not part of the music at all. Love Story tells a story as old as time. Love, troubles, and eventually heartbreak, ending on the oddly upbeat Never Fall In Love Again. This album was also part of my introduction to Future Funk, but originally I didn't really like a majority of the songs on it. Looking back, I was stupid to disregard the album, especially because literally every single one of my monthly playlists from back then has at least one song from this album. I didn't know it back then, but I was creating a lot of memories with these songs as the soundtrack to my life. It was never in the spotlight for me, always in the background, and I never realized just how much this album was there for me until I went back to look at my old playlist on Spotify. Then when I listened to the album start to finish, I found an incredibly varying album. There's so many different styles of music here, and I can't say I dislike any of them. <laughs> Angry is a French producer who in 2017 made the album Road Trip. I've listened to every song on this album hundreds of times, with features from artists I love like Vantage and Desired. Every time I finish listening to the album front to back, I end up frustrated that it's only 9 songs. I'm pretty convinced that it's one of the best, if not the best, future funk album out there. Every song is just so polished and complete. Every instrument adds real meaning to the songs. The samples are a little odd, at least at first, most being American, a little like the ones in Love Story, but after a few listens, they really grow on you. With a lot of music in this genre, there's an emphasis on the samples. Like, oftentimes the sample is the focal point, overshadowing the instruments surrounding it. Road Trip is a little bit different in this regard. The sample is used as an instrument as much as the other instruments are. They're kind of on an equal playing field. Because of this, the whole album just gives off a really unique vibe, from Sugar Road with its low tones and melodic vocals, to Milky Road with its deep notes from what I think is a bass guitar and sharp snare and kick drums. Because of what I mentioned earlier with the samples, a lot of songs in Future Funk can sort of be seen as just enhanced versions of the original song the sample was taken from, but I think the way Road Trip uses its samples makes it easily stand out on its own. Listen, I'm, I'm not a music expert by any means, but when I heard this album for the first time it just made sense to me. All the songs have a somewhat similar feeling and tone, but they still manage to tell a story, from Lovely to Sunset Road. Road Trip was the first album since Discovery that was perfect the first time I heard it. On my first listen I remembered what I had thought about Discovery, and I realized that for the first time since then I had discovered a perfect album. After that I went through a lot of the albums mentioned earlier in this video, stuff like Love Story and Bay, stuff that I thought was good but I never went back to as a whole. The biggest thing that Road Trip did was reintroduce me to the concept of perfect albums.
To be honest, the first few times I listened to this album, I didn't really like it. It's obviously grown on me quite a lot, otherwise I wouldn't be in this video, but it's quite a bit different from the other albums I was listening to at the time, and I had only heard little snippets of the album as a whole. There is one thing that makes Back by Popular Demand stand out. Take a listen to this. Now, Back by Popular Demand isn't necessarily future funk, in fact, I find it pretty hard to define. As you heard, this album has something really interesting about it. That audio is completely unedited, besides the skipping I did from beginning to end. That is how most of the songs on this album end, abruptly, so that they can lead into the next song seamlessly. The way that each song flows into one another is something that I've never really heard before. You could listen to this album as one whole audio file and for the most part call it one individual song. Now that's not necessarily the case, with some songs fading out without the smoother transition seen in the beginning of the album, but it still goes to show the element of fluidity throughout this album. I remember the song that really got me hooked on this album. I was on a road trip listening to a playlist and when it ended, two songs played one after another from this album. This smile really stands out to me. I would say it's the highlight of the whole album. I think it has to do with the punchy sort of sound of the music with the drums and the steel drum pairing really well. This song, along with the entire album, has a vibe that makes it really different. At the time I listened to this song, I was going through a hard time, and to be honest, I know this is kind of cliche to say, but this album really helped me. The weirdness of the album was almost kind of fitting to what was happening to me around that time. Well. I think we should move on to a different type of music. To be honest, before I found Because the Internet, I had a really stupid attitude about rap. I was under the impression that it was music for people who had no taste, that rap was just kind of generally uncomplicated music that had no deeper meaning. I had that elitist attitude where I hated things people liked just because they were popular. After middle school, I tried to reinvent myself and get rid of those traits that annoyed people and push them away, become a person that people would want to be around, and for the most part I failed. For a while I was still that elitist, annoying 7th grader that I really hated. You can't force yourself to change. Change happens to you when you're not looking for it. Maybe an event or an experience that changes your outlook, that makes you think differently. You just can't force that. I ended up listening to this album because one of my friends really liked it, and at first, of course, I was apprehensive. I had never really heard rap that had connected with me before, and I certainly wasn't expecting this album to be the first time it would happen. I started out with the big hits, Sweatpants, 3005, and The Worst Guys, and when I stopped stressing over my preconceived notions of what I thought rap was, and wasn't. I started to really enjoy the music, and I found it really easy to just
It is so incredibly easy to find yourself lost in this album. Even while I was writing this, I was listening to the album for reference, and I kept finding myself distracted. There's just something so beautiful and unique about each song. There's the moody shadows and no exit, the more traditional world star in Oakland, and of course there's the more... <clears throat> experimental stuff, which I didn't really like on my first listen, but they've now become some of my favorite tracks on the album. Gambino tells a story about fake friends, general indifference, and feeling numb. The feeling that even when you have everything, you can still have nothing. His character struggles to find himself after his father dies, and to use his own words, he has a realization that I don't know who I am anymore. This is the single album that has the most meaning to me. With my own struggles, dealing with social anxieties and self-loathing, I have found that this album perfectly encapsulates that feeling of being lost. Now, the, the friend who showed me this album, we're, we're not friends anymore. To be honest, I have no doubt that he's probably watching this. Between the endless fights and constant bickering, not to mention the amount of times we both fucked each other over, it's probably a good thing we're not friends anymore. But even if we aren't friends, and we'll probably never be friends again, I still find it valuable to go back to this album and cherish the good times we had. If you haven't heard this album yet, you should go listen to it. And I'd also recommend the screenplay that goes along with it. It's truly a great reason to go along with the album that kind of ties up the story really nicely. This is one of my newer experiences with Perfect Albums, being that I only found these two back in February. My thoughts on these albums aren't going to be as complete as my thoughts on other albums. The reason I put these two together is because they both tell the same story, with Igor being a continuation of the story after Flower Boy ends. Tyler had never really been on my radar. I had known about him and respected him, but I hadn't really gotten invested in any of his work until I heard Flower Boy. To be honest, I think that Igor is most likely a better album than Flower Boy is, but Flower Boy is the one that stuck with me most out of the two. Don't get me wrong, I love Igor with its experimental melodies and sounds with the music videos to reflect that vibe. The crazy, genre-bending, non-conforming album that it is. Igor is a masterpiece, and there's no question about that. There was just something about Flower Boy that struck a chord with me. I think it had to do with my realization that the person that Tyler calls at the end of November is the same person that he's chasing in Igor, and the fact that this person doesn't pick up the phone, and the message that he leaves is my favorite song on the album, Glitter. Flower Boy and Igor both show Tyler's distancing from the old horrorcore type stuff he used to do, and in my opinion, he's able to have more freedom with his newer stuff, and it shows. I've gone back to some of Tyler's older stuff, and honestly, it just doesn't really do it for me. I like some songs on Cherry Bomb and Wolf, but for some reason, I always find myself going back to Flower Boy and Igor. Before I end this video, I really want to thank you, the viewer. I know this is kind of cliche, but really, thank you. I've watched a ton of video essays like this before, and I never thought that I could make one myself. The fact that you are watching this means that I've accomplished something I didn't think I'd be able to do. Stick around, I'll be making more videos like this. I might even make a sequel to this one as long as I find more albums to write about. I love music. I love the music I listen to. Everyone's different, you know. I'm sure some people who've made it this far in the video aren't really fans of future funk or rap. I know some people hate sample music, and I, I get it. There's some genres of music I can't stand either. Everyone's got their own set of tastes, you know. And to be honest, with this video, I just really want to share these albums with you guys. I want to share my love for these albums that I spent hours upon hours of my time listening to. A lot of these have become the soundtrack to a lot of fond memories I have. It's just crazy to me how every piece of music is just a series of vibrations and yet it can make you feel something. I felt that for the first time back when I was a dumb little 7th grader who wouldn't believe just how much it would change him to listen to that album by Daft Punk.